Don't be this guy in the gym. Not only is it gonna do nothing for your squats, it's gonna do nothing for your sex appeal too. So if you're struggling to hit depth in your squat, I'm about to take you through a few exercises that are gonna help you hit your bottom position, grow your fucking quads, and your booty. So watch this. Leg gains and boot gains are a great bonus of having a full depth squat. However, the real reason why we want to hit full depth when we're Olympic weightlifting and when we're squatting is because it makes the movement far more efficient. If you can catch the bar deep in the bottom of a snatch or in the bottom of a clean, it means that you don't have to pull the bar so high when you're lifting, which is going to make you more efficient in the Olympic lifts. So now I'm going to show you these three exercises. It's going to help you find better depth in your squat so that you can do that too. The ankles is one of the key joints that if you're tight and restricted in will affect the depth of your squat. So I'm going to show you this simple exercise that you can build into your warm-up routine. It's going to get you used to having the knee tracking over the toe in the bottom position. It's an absolute myth that the knee shouldn't go past the toes when you're squatting because without doing this it's very difficult to find a deep squat position whilst keeping your spine in a neutral position in the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to place your foot up on a raised plates, box, anything like that, and then we're gonna drop the weight on top of the knee like so. Having this extra load helps us apply a little bit more pressure when we're at our end of range. Now what I'm focusing on while I'm getting into this bottom position is that my knee's going as far over my toes as possible, whilst my foot's still staying flat on the plate. So from here, I'm then gonna rock back and forth like so, holding at my end of range, feeling just before my ankle's gonna pop up, and then I'm rocking back. And we're gonna go through this like so. What you'll also find is in the trail leg here, that I'm also stretching out the hip flexor, which again, if the hip flexors are tight, which can happen from sitting at your desk all day, or driving all day, all of these things will tighten up the hip flexors. So this is kind of a bit of a double whammy by working the ankles, as well as the hip flexors on the trail leg. So you wanna go for about 10 to 15 reps and then swap sides. Just like I said, you wanna go as far over as you can. You're gonna be feeling this on the front end of the ankle like so, and then rock back. As you become more competent with this movement, just take your back leg a little bit further back, okay, but still make sure you're going as far near the toe as possible into the bottom position. Right, come on then, second exercise. So you're gonna need a wall for this one. If you don't have a wall, you can also use your rack to do it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start first of all with one foot away from the wall like so. And we're gonna take our squatting stance. Now remember that the squat width of your stance will also affect your ability to hit depth in the bottom position. The wider you go of your feet, the harder it is to sit down to your bottom position without falling over. And the closer your feet are, means when you go down to the bottom position, the likelihood is, is that the lower back is gonna round, okay? So you need to find the perfect squatting stance for you, which if you don't know what that is, make sure you go and check out my other YouTube video on squat stance, find out a little bit more about that squatting stance there, okay? So here's the link for that to go and watch afterwards. So, we're one foot away from the ball like so. Toes are very slightly turned out, okay? And what we're gonna do is gonna reach down, okay? Hopefully you can touch your toes, else you're really fucked. Okay, so we're gonna put hands on feet like so, and then we're gonna be going down, bring our bum down between our heels, and then driving the elbows out, okay, into the knee like so. When you hit your bottom position, I want you to pull your shoulders back and down, think nice big chest, so you're in a neutral position with your spine, and then extend booty up to the ceiling, like a stripper on the pole, okay? And we're gonna knock through reps like so. Every time you come down into your bottom position, make sure you're keeping your feet planted. If you find that your toes are popping up like this, I only want you to work the range in which you can keep a good flat foot on the floor like so. Okay, but every time you go down, get comfortable here and drive back up. One of the best things about this exercise is it requires no equipment. So if you've got five minutes spare in the office, jump in and do this exercise off your desk. The more time you spend in this position, 
the more comfortable you're going to be. So this final exercise I love because it's very specific to the range of motion and the squat. And one of my biggest things when it comes to mobility for Olympic weightlifting is the movements that you're doing have to be specific to the movements you want to be mobile in, okay? So this one I like to call wall slides. So what you're going to do is you're going to start, again, one foot away from the wall like so. So that's why these exercises work really well together. You're going to take your hands and link your fingers behind the head like so with the elbows nice and high. And then what I want you to do is go down into your squat position, thinking about breaking knee and, knee and hips at the same time. And then what you'll find is your hips will want to shoot back. So I want you to go down as far as you can, keeping that chest up. But the minute you feel like you're going to slip and fall back, you're going to let your bum go to the wall and then you're going to push with the legs to stand up like so and then rock back forward. This is great because it gets you used to feeling the weight in the legs as you hit your bottom position to push the floor away with the legs to stand up. As you become more competent with this movement, you'll be able to move closer again to the wall till you're actually getting all the way down into your bottom position, knees over toes, okay? Nice neutral spine and pushing with the legs to stand up, okay? Like I said, great movement because it's specific to the squat. And for you, who's been cutting those squats short for such a long time, this will be amazing. And the final and most important thing for you to do if you've been struggling with hitting depth in your squat is take some fucking weight off the bar. It's important that you learn how to master squatting full depth of the bar first before you put the weight on. If not, you get extremely strong in this top part of the squat and not strong in this lowest part, which means one day when you go down to the bottom position with a lot of load on, summit's gonna go <laughs> Moving well first isn't only important for your strength and the efficiency of the Olympic lifts, but it's important for your injury prevention too. So if you found these mobility exercises helpful, don't forget that I've got a full 40-day mobility protocol that will walk you through exactly how you can improve your range of motion and your mobility for Olympic weightlifting first before you start loading up the bar. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.